أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين خاتم النبيين محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم والصلاة والسلام على أحل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المظلومين واللعن الله على عدائم أجمعين قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في كتابه المجيد وفركان الحميد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل أوهي إلي أنه استمع نفر من الجن فقالوا إنا سمعنا قرآنا عجبا يهدي إلى الرشد فآمنا به ولن نشرك بربنا أحدا وأنه تعالى جد ربنا ما اتخذ صاحبة ولا ولدا وأنه كان يقول سفيهنا, سفيهنا أو الله شتتا وأنا ذننا أن لن تقول الإنس والجن على الله كذبا وأنه كان رجال من الإنس يعوذون برجال من الجن فزادوهم رحكا آمنا بالله وصدق الله العلي العظيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Our discussions have been on Surah Al-Jinn and we have been speaking about certain aspects of the jinn and we have yet to start the ayah by ayah uh, discussions on tafsir. And the first six ayahs of the surah says, say, it is asking Rasulullah to say, it has been revealed to me that a party of the jinn listen. And they said, surely we have heard a wonderful Quran. Guiding to the right way, so we believe in it and we will not set up anyone with our Lord. And that he, exalted be the majesty of our Lord, has not taken any consort nor a son. And that the foolish amongst us used to forge extravagant things against Allah and that we thought that men and jinn did not utter a lie against Allah and that persons from among men used to seek refuge with persons from among the jinn so, that, so they increase them in wrongdoing. Now, continuing with this, last week we also discussed the rank and virtues and the powers granted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to Amir al-Mu'mineen Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib salawatullahi wa salamu alayk. And these virtues and powers are also granted to the 11 Imams from his progeny as well. They are those who have the full knowledge of the book as we discussed this particular aspect earlier. And during the life, in their lives we have also seen and discussed examples of some of the traits that they, they did during their times which were beyond time and space. An important aspect of the superiority of having this ability of doing anything beyond time and space is the event of Mi'raj, which was a physical event, not a dream as some say, and is one that was beyond time and space that Rasulullah Muhammad Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam himself showed. And that we need to place our faith in the powers of the Ahlul Bayt rather than any other creatures because these are the Ahlul Bayt are those who have been given these powers by Allah himself. We also discussed that human beings in general are higher in rank and creation of Allah than any other creatures of Allah. Human beings are much higher than the jinn or any other creations. And two principles that we discussed were that all prophets and messengers of Allah were human beings and that the jinn were also all instructed to obey and believe in them and obey them. So the jinn were asked to uh, obey and believe in the prophets who were all human beings. There is no reverse here. There is none of the human beings that were asked to obey the jinn. 
All angels were ordered to prostrate Nabi Adam alayhi salam. This in itself shows the greatness of the human being and that the rank and value of human being compared to all other creatures. And Iblis who was from amongst the jinn is a sworn enemy of man and thus there is no reason to place any faith or take him as a guardian and or a leader for any aspects of our lives. Now, there are adulterated ideas in society and Allama emphasizes this very much throughout this tafsir of this particular surah. And he says that having discussed certain principles, Quranic principles, which are directly from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and which is free from all forms of adulteration, meaning any form of corruption or any form of uh, any a sort of ideas that are not existent because Allah is the truth and the Quran is the truth and he has revealed these things. He expresses that the general masses, generally the masses have over a period of time conjured various ideas about the jinn. And these are adulterated these are things that are from myths. These are things that are because sometimes when I can't understand something, oh, this is the jinn. So this is what Allama is telling us to be very careful about and not be amongst those who have these conjured ideas. Such conjectures, he says, are both against the intellect as well as the logic and, and these are unacceptable in Islam as well. And due to such adulterated ideas, the Lama emphasizes a corrupt and an unrealistic view of the jinn has emerged, emerged in the minds of people. If we were to ask people what they think of jinn, we will get a various, uh, various forms of ideas and these Lama says, is not acceptable because these are things that are mixed up with many ideas which are not realistic. The issue is such that whenever the word jinn is mentioned, a whole group of corrupt thoughts will come up in a person's mind. When jinn is mentioned, a lot of corrupt things come in mind. Some say it, some don't. But it is there, it is there in their minds that is going on. And amongst the thoughts that people mention, are, and he's giving this as an example and he says that the jinn are able to completely change in their form and substance and things like this. These are ideas that people have, that they have the ability of metamorphosis and that they can transform by magic or witchcraft and they can appear in one, to one person in one form and another person it can appear in another form. He says these are all man-made ideas and these are things that are there in people's minds and that these things that they take even the shape of very scary and wild creatures to the extent that he's given one particular example which I have never heard before but uh, this is something that is there that he has mentioned that they are the jinn are people are those creatures who are full of rage and anger such that if you throw a bowl of whole, uh, hot water, the whole house can get into a fire. Things like this, that the jinn can do that and things like this. He says these are all um, ideas that people have in their mind but have no reality. And he says that the one of the most important aspects is for us to abandon misconceptions. And the very role of a prophet or a rasul and the scripture, which is the book of Allah that comes with the prophet and the messenger, is to remove these sort of misconceptions from people's minds. That people should have realities and logical arguments for everything because Allah has not created anything which is not logical and rational. And this is something that is the primary uh, thing that we have to free ourselves from such misconceptions also. Myths could come over generations and over a period of time because we are social beings. We tend to get ideas from everyone. But the Quran 
and our Prophet and for an extension for this understanding the Quran and Rasulullah, the Ahlul Bayt salam, that is the biggest fadl that we have, the biggest grace of Allah that we can get the realities from them. Now, he says uh, that there is no proof that living creatures that exist are limited to only those that we know and which are visible to the naked eye. He says both scholars of religion as well as scientists in the field of natural sciences have proved this. And what they have they proved is that the number of crea creations that mankind is able to discern by using his senses cannot be compared to those which are, we are unable to perceive with our five senses. This is the statement. And then he explains this and he says that as an example until very recently, minute creatures that were not visible through a, a naked eye, we did not know them, so we never even knew that they existed. Similarly, he says, and that nobody believed that they existed. Similarly, nobody would believe that in a drop of water or a drop of blood, there are so many microorganisms and living organisms that exist. These are all things that have come up with scientific research and as we grow along. And humans cannot comprehend all the creations with its limited power that Allah has given us. Our senses are also limited. And then he tells us what are the limitations of the human being. For example, he says that today science are pro have proved that our eyes are limited to what colors we can see. Science has proved that there is a limitation to the number of colors we can see. But there are many beyond that. And there is also a limitation of the frequencies that we can hear. There are many other sounds that we cannot hear. And I, I was just uh, by the side, I was reading an article this week, sometimes back. It says the known creations of Allah are in the single unit of 1 million or 1.3 million or something like that, that is known to mankind today. But the unknown factors are more than 30 million. That is how much. That Allah's creation is so unlimited and so vast that as we will progress, inshallah, with science, we will know many things much more than that were known before or are known even now. And he says the state of the world is such that there is no amazement, that there are many types of living organisms that exist. When we sit here, there are so many things that are there that we can't see, we can't hear, but they exist. It does not mean they did not exist. And we must not misunderstand this, that this is from the jinn, or he did this, or he did that. No. And... Inshallah, we have to understand that what Rasulullah has brought to us is the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that is the true light that was sent by Allah to us so that we can understand his creation and not go wrong in any way. So he emphasizes one again, once again and says, in order to comprehend the existence of the jinn, we have to go back to the Qur'an and get a guidance from Qur'an rather than having any misconceived ideas. And the Qur'an informs us about the jinn along with their special characteristics. We have discussed a few characteristics, but when we go into the ayah by ayah discussions, then there are some more things that will come up, inshallah. On the other hand, He's taken a very scientific approach to this and he says on the other hand there is no logical proof to even deny the existence of the jinn. That the jinn are there. It is a creation of Allah. But what sort of a creation of Allah is beyond our sight and beyond our hearing. And he says so we need to accept their existence that they exist however 
It is also imperative that we dispel and keep away all forms of myths and corrupt ideas. When we discuss the Jain, he says, we must ensure that we do not enter into contaminated ideas or myths. And we, whatever we may have, we have to look for evidence for it or we have to go with the, uh, the Quran and the Ahadith of the Ahlul Bayt salam. And he says one of the most important aspects of the role and duty of a prophet and especially, he says, the Prophet which is, who is Sayyidul Anbiya wal Mursaleen, Muhammad Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, Muhammad sallam, is to remove all forms of superstitions and myths from the minds of the people. A specific role for all prophets, but more so emphasized through Rasulullah and that is one of his biggest roles that he was there and empower people his role was to empower people with uh, the believers with factual realities nothing beyond facts and reality so anything that we have that comes as a superstition to us if there is any truth then there will be factual reality behind it if not then we should not accept it. This is very important in our day-to-day -day lives, not only in the subject of jinn, but in any subject. There are many myths and superstitions that people come, and it comes, uh, sometimes it is uh, region-based. People who come from Africa have different uh, superstitions. People who come from uh, the East have different ones. And then he tells us that there is an important note that the word jinn, in Quran is a word much wider category of creation. It is a very wide thing that is covering lots of creations. And he says among these are included that are unseen creations of Allah. There are certain unseen creations of Allah that we have, we can't see that are cat not all unseen are categorized as jinn. But there are some which are categorized as jinn and some which possess intellect and some that don't, that we have discussed earlier. Sometimes certain animals can be seen with the naked eye but are hidden inside their nest. They can be seen but they are hidden inside their nest and these are included in the wider meaning of the jinn. Now this should not be misconstrued. It's not that everything that we can't see is a jinn. No, it is not. Not necessarily. There is a category of creation which is under the jinn. And then he quotes the uh, hadith of Rasulullah and he says, Rasulullah has said that Allah has created the jinn in five different forms. What are the jinn? They are in five different forms. First, he says, is a group like the wind. You can't see it. It's there, but you can't see it. Another group is in the form of a snake. Not all snakes are jinn, but in the form of a snake. The third group is in the form of a scorpion. Not all scorpions may be jinn, but there is a category which is amongst the jinn. The fourth or the next group is those wild animals of the land. And the last group is just like humans, not humans, just like humans who have the power of accountability, who are accountable for their actions because of their, for their good and bad deeds because they have the power to discern the right from wrong. See, when we talk of animals, they don't have that power of intellect. So they are not part of those jinn who are accountable. But the jinn that are like human beings who have been given intellect and who have been given the power of discerning right from wrong and good from bad, these are the ones that will be brought up and will be accounted also for a day of, of the day of Qiyamah. Then Allama says there are lots of there is a lot of tafsir of this hadith in itself which he has not mentioned, so we will not mention it also. But he says we need to pay close attention to the depth of this particular hadith in terms of the subject of jinn. 
and it will so, sort out if we pay attention it will sort out a lot of these stories that are going around about the jinn and then he quotes an example from a hadith from Amir al muminin Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib salawatullahi wa salam and he says for example when Amir al muminin says and he says you must understand the hadith in its correct context that Amir al muminin says do not drink water from a broken or a cracked glass <laughs> this is a hadith this is not a myth this is not a superstition Amir al muminin has said it since surely the shaitan sits in its defective and broken glasses <laughs> Meaning having a cracked glass or a broken glass and drinking from it is such that there is the shaitan sitting in those cracks. Now, shaitan does it mean there is a jinn sitting in every cracked glass? No, it does not mean that. And he's, he elucidates this and he says that keeping in mind that the shaitan is from the jinn. However, he says a broken dish and the area where it is kept in a place where all types of microbes and germs gather so it is talking of the gathering of germs in those cracks that come we don't see them but they are harmful to us and therefore we should not be using cracked items for our usage in our day-to-day -day life and he says that it, this is uh, not difficult to assume that the word jinn and shaitan in this hadith carry a general meaning of the jinn, not the, the specific shaitan or the specific jinn that we are talking about. And it should not be confused in that manner. And he says, although the hadith have, that when we talk of shaitan or when we talk of the jinn, it has specific reference to the specific creation of Allah, and these are those beings that have the understanding and the intellect and have the responsibility of their actions to their creator. Finally, he says there are numerous ahadiths in this regards, but we, can, we have to stop here, he says. And then there is a dua that he has mentioned in that tafsir part. And he says, Ya Allah, on that day when jinn and mankind will be brought forth to the court of justice, in your presence the day of kiyama and those who committed wicked deeds will feel remorse for your actions cover us with the shadow of your father and your grace so we hear man and jinn are both sometimes working towards wickedness and we have to take refuge in allah from such actions ya allah the sphere of your dominion is wide and our knowledge and understanding is limited. The dominion of Allah is wide and our uh, understanding is, and knowledge is limited. Therefore protect us, Ya Allah, from the slips and errors which we fall prey to. Ya Allah, the station and rank of your prophet is so great that in addition to his invitation to the deen of Islam, being extended to humanity and all other creations also answered his call. Therefore, Ya Allah, accept and place us amongst the true believers. Ameen, Ya Rabbal Alameen. Wa sallallahu ala muhammadin wa alihi tahirin. Muhammad wa ala Muhammad salawat. Madad ki ji ay ma me zamana Madad ki ji ay ma me zamana हटा दीजिए खैबत का 
ਪਰਦਾ ਖੁਦਾਰਾ ਪਰਦਾ ਖੁਦਾਰਾ ਮਦਦ ਕੀਜੀਏ